Hey, I'm Sam and I do design, and in the video today, it is a key shot tutorial on how to render this Eames lounge chair. There are a few things that I want to go through in the tutorial today. The first thing is how I got the plywood on the chair itself to wrap around the body, which a lot of people ask me about. The next thing I'm gonna show you guys how to get this wrinkled look into the leather. And then the next thing I'm gonna show you guys is how to do the curtains in the background as well, which is a lot easier than you think because this whole scene is rendered inside Keyshot. A lot of people thought that I photoshopped the background to have curtains in, but that is all rendered in Keyshot. So without further ado, Let's hop into Keyshot and get started. Okay, so in Keyshot now, you can see that we have the chair set up in a scene with curtains as well. And the first thing I wanna talk about actually is the curtains because we can already see them here and they are modeled and I've just applied a velvet material to it, which is really easy to set up. It's just a standard velvet material. And I actually just downloaded these from the internet. I think it was either uh, Turbo Squid or GrabCAD or somewhere like that. Uh, there are so many free models that you can use uh, for the backgrounds of shots. And it's just a great resource to be able to import them into your models to give it a sense of realism. Because I find that any object in a scene that isn't uh, perfectly straight or doesn't have perfect geometry really adds realism to a shot, which is why I use these curtains because obviously down here where they are wrinkled, um, it's really gonna add some realism into the shot as well. I probably should show you how to import a model. You're just gonna go up to file, import, find out where you saved it, uh, and then you can start to rearrange it by going to geometry view, zooming in. You can see that I've got it uh, set up just as a bounding box so I can kind of see where everything is in relationship to each other. So you've got the chair down here, you've got the curtains up here. If I wanna change that to something a little bit more realistic, then I can change it up at the top there. And then I can right click and move part and use that in the geometry view. And then you can do that because once you've got the camera set up, then you can start moving things around in geometry view. And it means that you don't need to start moving the camera around here as well. So. That takes care of the curtains. So sorry for everyone that thought that I modeled them myself, but again, there is no shame in downloading things and assets to put into your scene to make it more realistic. The next thing that I'm going to move on to is the plywood texture. Before I move on to that, uh, I best say that I have put this step file of the chair onto my website. There are other step files out there that you can download on places like CG Trader and Turbo Squid, but they are very expensive, or actually they're not very expensive, they are expensive, and that is rightly so because these chairs take a lot of time to model. You can go out and buy the step files from CD Trader if you like, but I've put this specific file on my website, and I'm gonna say that the first 10 downloads are going to be free, and then everyone else after that, I'm going to do a heavily discounted price compared to CG Trader and places like that. A heavily discounted price specifically for you guys on YouTube for sticking with me. And I'm gonna do it maybe at, at 10 pounds or something like that, which is uh, probably about a third of the price of CG Trader. I think it's only fair to charge that much because uh, the people on CG Trader have obviously spent their time making it. I've spent my time making this and it just uh, goes to support the artist as well. So first 10 downloads are free. Everything after that is heavily discounted at 10 pounds. So you can find that on my website and you can follow along with this tutorial as well. Now, with that being said, let's move on to the texture of the plywood. If I double click this and then go to material graph, you can see that I am using a downloaded texture here. Uh, I think I just searched wood texture online and I set this up as an advanced material so I'm gonna quickly take you through this wooden material to explain the different elements of it. Each material that you download is gonna come in slightly different formats, but you can kind of start to understand the different ones uh, because they're gonna do the same things across all the materials that you need. So this wooden material, for example, we have a color value that goes into the diffuse section of the advanced material. And what I've done here is I've just added a color adjustment node uh, because I wanted to make it more red and more vibrant, just like the real Eames chair is as well, because you can see here 
And actually this wooden material in particular is quite beige and quite uh, muted in the color. So I wanted to add some more contrast into this bit as well. So you can see uh, I've increased the saturation by uh, to 1.7% and the contrast to 1.5% as well. And that's just gonna go into the, the diffuse material and give it the color. Next is going to be the reflection and the gloss maps. Now these are very similar in what they do. And it's basically these two work together in order to tell uh, Keyshot how shiny the material is going to be. The reflection map goes into the specular node and the gloss map goes into the roughness node. And these two together are going to make sure Keyshot knows how shiny or rough it is. And again, I've just used a color invert because it's really about playing with whichever different look works right, right? So I can press C on the keyboard and you can see it's really quite dark here. But what I want is quite a light um, specular. So I can do the color invert and then you can see that uh, it's more white and the, the white is going to make it look more reflective. So that is exactly what I want. So I just put that into the specular there. Press C again and that's gonna show all of the materials and then I can come over here and press C on the color to number, which is slightly different. It's essentially um, a levels adjustment like you'll find in Photoshop. So these are the different levels with the, the mediums and the, the highlights and the shadows, and you can invert these and, and move these around. This time it needs to be a dark material that's gonna make it shiny, and anything that's lighter is going to be less shiny, and you can see the grain of the material here, which is exactly the look that I want. And then finally, the bump map or the normal map is going to go in as well, and you need to make sure that they're all mapped in the same way and then using a normal map down here that goes into the bump node here and i don't want it to be too bumpy i want it to be really smooth as if it's got a gloss lacquer on top of the wood as well and that is just set to minus 0 0.5 because keyshot actually uses a weird way of reading normal maps and it inverts them so you need to use minus in the bump height for keyshot and it's in a cylinder format because if I move this around, let's see. Can I get all of this on my screen? No, that's fine. But I'm gonna say move texture. And you can see that I've wrapped it around the body here as best I can in a cylinder format. You can see the orange shape is where the texture is wrapping. And that is basically going to give the best representation possible for wrapping wood around this, uh, this shape here. Now, if I'd have spent more time on this, I could have gone into something like Blender and I could have, uh, what, what Blender would let me do is let me cut out each shape and lay them flat uh, in, a, in a JPEG or PNG format. And I can take that shape, uh, take that net into Photoshop and I can apply the texture in Photoshop based on that template. And when I bring the, the texture into Keyshot, I can use something called UV map, which would wrap it around perfectly because Blender has already told it where to go. I didn't do that and I've mapped all of these manually because uh, I don't know Blender very well. And if you wanna learn how to use Blender, go and search something like Blender Guru because I'm starting to learn, but I haven't managed to, to learn it properly yet. So. Without UV maps, it is very difficult to get materials to wrap around a product uh, in a way that is natural. So the way that I got around it, and specifically for the layers of plywood, as you can see here, they're wrapping around the form. And that goes for all of the different uh, wooden pieces. There are three wooden pieces, and I've got the plywood to wrap around all of them. And the way that I did that is in SolidWorks, which is where I modeled this, I essentially did an extrude uh, in this plane. So I extruded along uh, this axis, and then I cut out this shape from this axis. Uh, and you can see there that uh, it's only really two uh, features that you need to make a complex shape like that. Extrude it one way and cut out the other way. But what that means is I already had a sketch that uh, matched up perfectly with this profile. And what I could do was offset 
some sketches from that same sketch. And I could split the main body into lots of little thin bodies uh, that I could then apply a different material to in Keyshot. So if I go to the scene and I select, you can see here that all of these different layers are different bodies that I can apply different materials to. Now, that means that it is a really heavily intensive uh, model to render because there are so many different bodies in this, uh, more than you would expect. Uh, but that trade-off comes because I spent less time um, in Blender. Uh, I, in fact, I didn't use Blender at all, and it meant that I didn't need to think about UV maps and, and do all that uh, stuff as well. So the next thing that I want to talk about is how I got the wrinkles into the leather. And for that, I'm going to jump out of Keyshot for a little bit, and I'm going to take you into Procreate on the iPad Pro, because that is how I started to uh, come up with some custom textures ready for the leather. So what I have essentially done is I have colored in white where I want a wrinkle to appear because the way that we are going to do it in Keyshot is to add a bump map into the texture itself uh, and then the black areas are going to show no change and then the white areas are going to show a change in the bump map itself. So what I have done is I have mapped out roughly where the buttons go and from there I have drawn with a very, very soft brush. In fact, I'm using, it's called soft airbrush. I'm basically just going in and really smoothly, as smooth as possible, drawing the wrinkles and where I want them to go. So a good example of that is here where you can see uh, it fades in really smoothly right here and then it becomes more prominent here as well. So that is a good example of that. Uh, I rushed a few places and you can see that there are some where it uh, stops quite abruptly and that is really going to show up in the bump map in the key shot file as well and something like this. That's quite an abrupt finish. So the key with this is to try and get it as smooth as possible to make sure that the wrinkles are as smooth as possible because in the material itself, the wrinkles need to start off really smoothly and you, you shouldn't be able to see where the wrinkle starts. They should all flow on from one on each other. So all I did then was just export it as a JPEG, sent it over to my computer, and then I can use that as a bump map in the material itself. And I will take you through the material graph now in Keyshot so you can see how to set it up for yourself. So now that we've got our texture from Procreate into the computer, I can double click on the leather material that I've got up here and go over to that material graph. And you can see here that it is exactly the same layout as the wood. I've got a color that goes into the diffuse because that's gonna give it the black color that we need. I've got a reflection map that's mapped into the specular node. The gloss goes into the roughness. And this is where we are going to use a bump add to use the normal map that I downloaded with the material. Uh, actually, I think this is a polygon material, not sponsored by polygon, but I use a lot of their textures. It's really cool. I'll link that down below. So you get all of these when you download the material from polygon. And I needed to use the normal map from that material to make it look realistic. And I needed to add in our procreate material uh, into the bump add feature so that it takes that into consideration as well. So you can see if I double click this to activate it and I go to move texture, and I move this out of the way, you can see that I've mapped it onto um, the surface as best as possible in a planar um, map feature. So the mapping type is planar. And what that is going to do is essentially just project it onto the surface uh, and you can see I can move it around and, and get it in different orientations based on uh, wherever I press on the material itself. But it needs to be um, forward facing onto the material. Um, and that is the way to do that. So I'm going to come out of here and press ooh, cancel there and cancel there. And essentially you just repeat that onto all of the different leather parts. And that is all it takes to give it that extra sense of realism because there are no patterns in there and it's just all hand made and hand drawn and you can see that it's just going to give it that extra bit of realism in there. So with all of that being said, I rushed through all of this so I can fit it into a reasonable length video. Um, we've covered the curtains, we've covered 
the uh, splitting of the material within SOLIDWORKS to make the material here, and we've covered how to get these wrinkles in the uh, leather itself. Don't forget, if you want to download this model, the first 10 of you can get it for free, and everyone else is going to pay a heavily discounted rate of £10 or whatever currency you're using because I want to try and give this away to let as many people use it as possible, but it's unfair to everyone on CG Trader if I'm giving it out for free and taking their money away from them. The only thing left to do now is to go up and set the cameras, which I'm not going to go through in this tutorial um, because there are plenty of other tutorials on how to do that. Uh, we're going to go in and change the scene to interior, and um, we're going to make sure that the rest of the scene is black because you can see that I've got some um, planes set up here that are going to give the light. So we don't need any from the HDR. There are two ways really to make the lighting in the scene. One is to put it into the HDR, but for this time I've decided to use uh, physical planes that are uh, giving light out here. Uh, and again, I'm not going to go through my setup too much because there are plenty of tutorials out there in order to um, tell you how to set up a scene like that. This was really just a tutorial about the materials. So I hope that you've learned something in this tutorial. Do let me know down in the comments below because I love hearing about what you have learned. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell button and anything else that YouTube asks you to do. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.